Hey, Power Couples, this is Carlos. And Catherine. And Sonia. And Chris. Hey, we're the Power Couples Rock Squad, and we are excited about today's Power Pod. We're going to give you three practical ways that you can conquer a crisis. Listen up. Welcome to the Power Couples Rock Podcast, where our mission is to build a collective community of marriages, where we encourage, inspire, and support one another in order to have masterful marriages. We're Carlos, Catherine, Chris, and Sonia. Please check us out, powercouplesrock.com. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. We believe that one of the most amazing legacies we can leave in life is a great marriage. So we hope you'll listen, learn, and love the conversation. Let's power up. Today's topic is awesome. It's it's something that we don't think about sometimes until we're in it. And that is how we deal with, identify, and how we eventually conquer a crisis as married couples. And that may sound like daunting right now in whatever space that you're in and you're listening to it right now. But it's important that not only do you deal with these situations when you're in it, but learn from them and learn to prevent that crisis from happening again. So I am just so honored and blessed to be surrounded by my most favorite people in the universe. Please welcome my favorite couple, my favorite power couple in the universe, Carlos and Catherine Green. Say hello to the people. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, power couples? What's up, power couples? It's good to be back in your presence. I guess we're not in their presence, right? For them to be listening, though. I love it. Well, we want them to feel the presence of us, and we want to feel their presence. Yeah. I feel like we're in their presence. We're we're right in right in their heads right now. That's right. That's right. And I don't mean to make it creepy, power couples, <laughs> but that's kind of what we're doing. <laughs> and of course, I cannot forget to mention my most beautiful wife, Sonia. Say hello to the people. Hi, power couples. Carlos, I want to roll this ball over to you, man, and put this into your court because I know this is something that you've spent a good bit of time contemplating and, uh, and praying and, and everything that goes into this. And it, it's got a special place in your heart. So if you would uh, just it, maybe share with the power couples what's on your heart and uh, we'll, we'll get into the, uh, the three ways to conquer a crisis. Correct. So as we're doing a lot of the couple coaching and sometimes situations that we may be going through in our own worlds or in our cities or country or whatever, people may not have direction that they need in order to understand how they can best as a couple handle or conquer a crisis. And so the three things that we want to recommend to couples when they're conquering a crisis is one, to get grounded. Two, find an opportunity to grow in that situation. And then three, make sure that we're giving. And we can talk more extensively, or we will be talking more extensively about those three areas, grounded, growing, and giving. And I always like to just wrap our discussion around scripture that will help support these recommendations that we're giving. So the first scripture that I want to give Our listeners today in the area of grounded is actually coming from Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. And it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And then when you've done all that you know to do, stand and just stand firm in the word of God and stand firm in what you believe and what you know. So that's the first scripture. The second scripture that we want to wrap ourselves around is in the area of growing. And that's in 2 Peter. 3, 17 through 18. And that scripture talks about when you're being uh, growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and understanding what the word says in that growing space. And then the last one is in giving. Oftentimes we have the tendency to actually pull back when we're in a crisis. 
But when we actually take our minds off of ourselves, off of our crisis and start giving back, that helps in the healing process. So that scripture that we come from in the area of giving comes from Luke 6, verse 38. And it says, give and it will give it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over so that you will have much more room to receive. So I'm just paraphrasing that one, but please go back and take a look at those scriptures and that will help to ground you, help you to grow and help you to give. So that's what we have, Chris. That's amazing. I think this whole thing is going to ground us. I'm, I, you know, it's, it, it, I'm, I'm excited to dig into it. I think there's a lot of practical things that we can, we can pull out of each one of these, uh, each one of these things. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to start digging in and talking about the first G grounded. Yes. You know, when I'm thinking about being grounded, I'm thinking about doing something wrong. And my, and, and, and my, my mom or dad said to me to my room without dinner and, and may I got to sit at home and, and do nothing. I can't play Xbox for a week. Isn't that Didn't what that grounded happen to you is? a lot? <laughs> yeah, it really did. Except it wasn't an Xbox. I'm going to age myself. It was an Atari 2600. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> oh, oh. And, and your record player. Yes. Yes. My record and cassette player. I love that record player and cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When I think about uh, being grounded, as Carlos has talked about in our relationship, we know that when we go through a difficult time, that because we have already set our marriage on the word of God, that, the is, rock. that is the rock. That is where we go to to get strength. That is where we go to encourage one another. And that is where we go to, to get our wisdom and our understanding as we walk through this crisis situation. And so that's the biggest thing is being grounded in the word, because sometimes you, uh, if you're not grounded in the word, you tend to grip, grip on whatever you can grip grip on and it may not be solid uh, and people are shifting at all states of their lives so what better way to stand on the word which is the same yesterday today and forever uh, the word of God has helped us through all, all types of situations and particularly with I just give a quick instance with our uh, with our you know, son when he was going through his situation and there was really a cry crisis time for us because it challenged us to say all of these years that we've been trusting God and putting the word in our hearts and planted them in our children that our son was choosing to do just the opposite of what we had taught him and we had to stand firm on the word and trust God in what he had told us that he is more than a conqueror that he is not giving us the spirit of fear that uh, we we he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light and that we had to trust him on that and that his word would not come back void. And that's what we did. We kept holding him on his promises and that firm foundation. I'm so grateful that my my son has in, I'll say my son, but his, uh, our son, I didn't mean to say my son, but our son has, God has just shown his word faithful because he is now seeking to do what is right what he had been grounded in. So that's just what I thought I'd share with others. I wanted to share a personal experience and how we have utilized the word and have stood grounded. I think one word that you said, uh, Catherine, that kind of um, resonated with me was trusting. Um, I just had finished a Bible study called Trustworthy, and it um, it does tell us that we have to trust that God's going to do what he says that he can do. We've been studying second, first and second Kings and first and second Chronicles of all of the, um, the Kings of Israel. And, um, it's been very eye opening to see that God did exactly what he said he was going to do. So I think in times of crisis, when you read and are grounded in the word, you have to believe and trust that God's going to do what he says he's going to do and get you through it. Yeah, and I think Carlos touched on this when he spoke about the verse in Ephesians 6 about the armor of God. And, I, and when Catherine was telling that story, I, I kept on thinking, you guys have been grounded in your personal relationships with God as well as your, your, your relationship together. And, you know, that created that strong armor. So when a situation like that happens, and we all know when you go into a crisis, 
what happens that the enemy, that's when the enemy attacks for most right there. That's when you're, you're, you're most vulnerable. And if you're not armored up, if you're not in a situation where you can protect yourself, uh, you're not surrounded by a community of, um, of people that you know and you trust. You're not grounded spiritually and not grounded together on the same page in, in your relationship. The enemy can sneak in that, that back door with that Trojan horse or whatever. And before you know it, you're battling your selfish motives, your depression. There's all kinds of things that can happen uh, in a crisis to, to anyone, depending on their mental state. But that armor um, that you that you put on can help you so much, not only when you're in a crisis, but but can prevent that. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I, I like that, too, because if you put on the whole armor, you're protecting yourself from head to toe. Because the enemy can come in at any way. What you talked about, Chris, regarding our minds, you know, if we go back to Romans 12, 1 and 2, it talks about renewing our mind every day. And we put on that helmet of salvation, that protects our mind. And then all of the other armor protects every other bit of our, I mean, protects the rest of our bodies. The Here's one that I don't think people would really understand that it's an attack of the enemy is for us to operate in fear. And so if we are grounded in the word, then fear has no place in our space. If we're grounded in the word. So we just have to, because God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind or a disciplined uh, person that we should, the disciplined person that we should be. So if we're operating on that concept or on that precept there, then it's not, not meaning that we shouldn't be cautious or make sound decisions, but it, we should not be operating from a place of fear. So being grounded in the word will actually help to drive out fear. And the, the word also tells us that love cast out all fear. And so we have to understand what that groundedness means for us as a couple. And uh, that's going to help us to conquer any kind of crisis that comes. And I, if we're not grounded, it's going to be very hard for us to do the other two recommended ways that we're talking about today. I think you're absolutely right, Carlos. And then I know we can move to the second one, but I just really wanted to emphasize about uh, your mind being right. And also we say we stand on the word of God, but the moment we get into some type of crisis situation, sometimes we just back down or we don't trust him for what he said he was going to do in our lives. We don't use those scriptures the way we should use them. And that that thing about fear, fear is one of those things that can spread and that can keep you in a space of depression, that could keep you in a space of losing um, control of feeling like all hope is gone. And that is the that is the what is fear is designed to do for us is to keep us in bondage. And we've got to be able to act on the word of God and believe it. And the minute that that rises up in us, we've got to call those things to life that God has put in our hearts because he knows that that's going to rise up. And we have to do a better job as couples and as people of God to be able to live and walk and breathe in the scriptures that he had left for us to do. And just a little bit of tip, just a little trivia. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but it does say in the Bible, uh, fear not or do not fear 365 times, which is one time for every day. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's so, great. Just that's a little great. tidbit there. That's Thank you, Sonia. Great, Sonia. Thank you. Uh, Chris, you were getting ready to say something. Yeah. Um, so that is grounded. And that most, uh, I'm, I'm so glad we covered that first. That's so important. That's so important, whether you're in a crisis, especially when you're in a crisis, but whether you're in a crisis or not, continue to remain grounded. Uh, continue to keep your armor up uh, because you never know when that enemy is going to sneak in that, uh, sneak in that back door on the Trojan horse or whatever. So here we go. We're going to go to the second G and. This is something that stopped happening for me when I turned 23, and that's, <laughs> at least physically, <laughs> and that's growing. Yeah. Uh, I love it. It Chris. is what it is. Somebody mm-hmm. said, and it ain't what it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's some things you can't control, and there's other things you can't control. And me being five foot nine and a half, I cannot control that. Boy, that's tall in my world, so. I love it. Okay, so we're going to refocus and reshift to growing. Uh, I had given the scripture for growing, uh, which was Second Peter. 3, 17 and 18 and growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, we're always, God gives us grace. There's new mercies and grace that actually get, that we get every morning. Uh, but I love that second part of it, the knowledge of it and growing. And oftentimes when we find ourselves in a crisis, we get so wrapped up in the crisis that we really don't understand the opportunity to develop, grow, and invest in ourselves to learn from this crisis what it looks like and how do we handle the next crisis that's going to come because it definitely will come. And so oftentimes, instead of worrying, there's nothing that we can do regarding worrying because, again, in the scriptures, it tells us Worrying cannot even add an extra day or an extra length to our days, any extra length to our days that we should not worry. If he can cover and take care of the birds of the air or the sparrows, then he's definitely going to be able to take care of us. So it gives us comfort to know, okay, if I'm in this crisis situation, what do you want me to know from this? What do you want me to learn from this? How can I grow even more, not only in your word, but as a couple, what can we do throughout this situation to make us even stronger? And there's so many platforms, opportunities that we can take in order to grow in this crisis. And here's the thing. You don't have to spend 24 hours a day in it, but you could take that time at night for 10 minutes to say, OK, what is it, Lord, that you want me to learn from this? How can I grow in this? How can I set my day the next day? to be able to actually battle through this crisis. So I just want to just, yeah. just give that kind of encouragement to people. I think this is something that personally I have, I have trouble with. And we, we talked about fear. We talked about all of this. And I think a lot of people uh, listening to us right now, they have trouble with this. I'm not perfect. I've never pretended to be. And, and this is something that, that I have struggles with. But I do know that um, I'm working on it. And I also know that when I'm in a crisis situation, no matter what it is, you're out of work or you have your sickness or something is going on with your, with your, your family, your, your son or your daughter, like something that is just maybe potentially traumatic for you. I think obviously the grounded part comes into play, but I think what's important is you look at the whole blame versus responsibility thing and you don't, when you're in the middle of a crisis, stop asking why and get out of the crisis. Mm. If, you're in, if you're in a house that's burning, don't try to figure out why it's burning. Get out of the house, right? Yes. Right? Take responsibility. Yes. Take responsibility. Go back to the word. You know, if, you've, if you're grounded with your armor, get out of that crisis. Go to the, you know, to your point, Carlos, go to the Lord. And, and like, this is, this is where we start with this thing. And let's get out of this crisis. You can figure that, you can figure out why it happened later. That's something that can happen later. Because I think when you, when you start thinking why, that's when you start worrying. That's where you start blaming. And you just got to, it's time to take responsibility, get out of that crisis. And then, you know, obviously learn from it later so you can avoid whatever that crisis situation is for sure. Mm -hmm. That's, um, that's great, Chris. Uh, just something that came to mind when you were talking about something about a fire, if something's burning, uh, you got, you want to get the right tools <laughs> to be able to put that fire out if it's bigger than what you can handle. And this, a crisis is something sometimes bigger than what you can handle. Yes. And you want to get the right tools. One of those is the word of God. The other is talking with someone in the community who has your best interest at heart, connected with someone who can help give you some words of wisdom to be able to move forward. And I love uh, crisis is an opportunity to see God at his work at his best. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah, that just came, you know, God just be moving. <laughs> can you say that again? Can you say I that like again? That. I, like I don't that. know that I can say it again because it just dropped in my spirit. <laughs> you said crisis is an crisis. opportunity 
to learn more about God. Or for, for God to show out, allow, I think is what I got. To allow God to work. To, to work. This is an opportunity to allow, to allow God to work. That's, to work that's it. That's best. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. You get power couples. You hear how they all mess that all up. See, when, when this, when God gives it to you, people, people <laughs> will try to summarize it and put it in their own perspective and their own way. But the bottom line is let God do what he does best. And I just think being real with God, even when you, when that spirit of fear rises up, because you want to constantly be growing. I use this probably before in another analogy, but it's just like that plant that you planted that started with a seed. And as it begins to grow, you watered it. And as you watered it, there was sometimes uh, some dead leaves that may appear and you just picked it off. And then a new leaf sprouted up on it. And then you keep watering it and growing. And so, and then sometimes you got to move it to a bigger pot and then as it keeps growing. And so that's what we should be doing in our lives. We should be continuing to grow. And these experiences that we have, they're to help us to grow and to become more and more like Christ. That's what it's all about. If we didn't have these experiences, we wouldn't be able to know how to grow and use his words to our advantage to help us through every situation. So let God give God the opportunity to do the best that he does when we are in a crisis situation. Catherine, I think that um, crisis and being in those in those situations as it relates to the analogy you used with the plant is that every time we seek him, um, we allow him to do what he does. Um, We search out, uh, you know, God, what do you want me to do in this? Um, It grows roots which is what grounds that plant to be able to um, to stand and to be able with, to withstand crisis. So um, not just to grow, but to also grow roots, um, I think is, is what, that, that, what that helps us do. Yes. And here's, here's what I would say. If we could stay with that analogy, Sonia, I love that with the plant. And then I'm going back to what Catherine had said too, is that oftentimes when we're in a crisis in our minds, our world starts to shrink and we're thinking that we're the only ones going through this particular situation. But if you look at a plant when it's growing, it needs assistance from so many other different things in order to grow and bloom. Even when the weather is at its worst, it still needs the rain that comes to help it grow. It still needs the sunshine to come and help it grow, helps help it grow. It needs the good soil to help it grow. And it needs someone nurturing it and pruning it. And so all of those resources will help that plant flourish to be the best it can be. Mm -hmm. And so for us as couples, think about all the resources that we have that could serve as sunshine, rain, soil, someone's nurturing or or pouring into us. So I don't want our worlds to shrink to say that there's no one available or no resources available to help us. We need those resources in order to continue growing. Mm, That's right. And it's not just power couples rock. You guys always talk about being lifelong learners and reaching out and find those resources. And none of us are the experts in everything, but we know uh, enough to be dangerous about some things. And we know when to suggest to particular people to talk to other people or to use particular resources that may be beyond what, what we may be able to encourage and provide. Yeah, mm. that's great. That's, that's great. Good. What's number three? Number three. What's that? Is giving. Give it. Ooh. <laughs> Carlos, you said Luke 638. Was that right? Uh-huh. Correct. And I want to give you all the correct scripture for that, because I think that that is so important for us to kind of take a look at that scripture. So in Luke 638, it says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. It would be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it would be measured to you. And so, again, when we get in crisis situations, the tendency is for us to protect and hoard ourselves or the things that we have instead of taking a more comprehensive view to say, okay, in this challenging crisis here, who else can I help? How can I give of myself? Because that's going to help you from a mindset and a heart set 
to be able to take your mind off of worrying and off of fear. And I think that what you will find, I know that what you will find is that answers or solutions will find their way to you in your couple relationship. And so we just don't want to get drawn into ourselves and start protecting our own selves and just start hoarding ourselves uh, as a couple, but really start to give out what that looks like. And the word just tells us if we give, that's the first thing, give, it will be given back to us in those measures. So I I just think that that's a, a beautiful concept that God has put in his word for us to live by. Um, I wanted to chime in a little bit on that, Carlos, and then talk about a little bit of challenge that I have with that. I know this is Chris's favorite, but I am challenged for a time sometimes with that. And that is basically basically because us being in uh, helping couples and being involved in the community and just wanting to be there for people. Sometimes our time, of, we can give so much time that we don't give enough to ourselves. And I am often challenged. I think as long as it's not selfish, but I'm often challenged when, because I think we have to refuel ourselves. And so we can give and give and give and that we don't have enough to give inside and I, Carlos and I often talk, I tell, uh, we talk about how if we don't take care of our own household first, then how can we give to others in that way? And not in a selfish way, but it's so that we can be uh, better. And better be givers, yes. Better givers and be present when we give and not go into an attitude. Because I mean, if I don't get enough time with him and I'm thinking all these couples are wanting, I said, they want us to talk with them, but we need to talk to one another. And so we have to be careful not to get uh, bombarded and give, give, give that we haven't given to ourselves. And so that's important for couples who are strictly into this ministry as well, that does the work of helping couples um, have healthy relationships. You can get lost in that. And so that's one of the things sometimes I'm challenged and I have to pause and just say, hey, let's invest in each other. Yeah. Well, I believe that the order that we have these in then confirms your trepidation in this and that people struggle with it because what they try to do is just give and they haven't grounded themselves first. They haven't taken the time to ground themselves. They haven't taken the the time to grow. And then because you can't give out something that you don't have. And so you have to be grounded. You have to be able to grow and then you can give. And so thank you for bringing that up so that people can put this in the appropriate order of importance so that we can be effective. Thank you. I love that perspective. I think some of our greatest joy comes from giving. So I think that the Mm -hmm. more you can do that um, in a healthy way for yourself, uh, the better. Yeah. I agree. You know, I, I spend I've, I've spent a lot of time in the past uh, number of months going and, and networking with with various businesses. And, and sometimes there's career events and, and networking events. And I'm blessed enough to be able to, uh, you know, attend these and support these. I'm hearing, uh, you know, a lot of people who were unemployed or are currently unemployed. And of course, that can that's something that can really create a lot of stress on multiple different levels. If you're not grounded, you don't have that armor up and you're, you're not growing and you're, you're pulling back and that fear is overcoming your faith. And then they tell their story and you hear their story. And the reason why they ended up getting employed is because they didn't say, they didn't think of themselves selfishly all the time. They said, I, I'm going to try to give to others through this process. I just learned about this particular thing as it relates to LinkedIn or this particular networking or this is a job but it's not a job for me. I know somebody else who's unemployed. I want to I want to try to connect them with that person so that they can move on in their lives and get the stress out of there and give back to them and work that connection and 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 think about other people and give back and and then those blessings come back and then they're employed and they will always say To a man, to a woman, they will always say, it wasn't until I started giving, and that's when I received. And it also reminds me um, of a story. I I was with a a gentleman this week who was incarcerated, and he uh, he was in prison for 37 months. And that 
I would say that that qualifies as a crisis, right? So that's a situation where he was uh, wealthy. He had what everyone sort of, you know, calls the whatever the dream, right? You're, you're, he's got the house on the lake. He's got cars. He's got, he's wealthy. He has a great big job, uh, you know, at a big company, uh, wife, family, that whole thing. And then he was in a situation where he was at his company and he did something that he had no idea was, was illegal. And by the time that that happened, there was no way for him to get out of it. And he was incarcerated. And he lost everything, absolutely everything, except his wife. Wow. His wow. wife went and visited him every single weekend, drove four hours to the prison and visited him every single weekend, stood by his side. They, they were together the entire time. And he was inspired while he was in prison to develop a plan that he could, once he got out, he had a business in which he could consult speak and work with companies in order to avoid the situation that he was in so other people wouldn't have to go through what he did. And now he's in a situation where he has a wonderful marriage. That's really at the end, it's just like, you know what? All this stuff doesn't matter. It's a shift of priorities. And that's sometimes what is a crisis. It's like, you know, you've got to learn through that and realize what's, what's the, what are the most important things in your life? Is it, is it your job? Is it your, is your fine, like why, why, why are, you know, or is it your relationships, your wife, your relationship with God, like all of these things are going to be there, whether you got money or not. And that, that was just for me, I can't, I mean, that's giving. He thought of others while he was in prison. Of course, in that crisis, that, that was it. I mean, can you imagine going to jail, being a solitary confinement for 30 mm. days? No, not at, not at all. Well, here's what I love, Chris, though. You just mm. walked through this order of importance, uh, I felt like based on the story, he was very grounded in who he was, even though he found himself in a challenging situation. Then he started growing, understanding what he needs to do better in this situation. And after that, he started to give of himself just so mm -hmm. that no one else could be no one else, hopefully where anyone else could avoid this particular situation. So I love that he did that in that order. And isn't it great how his, how his wife stuck by, stood by him and how many times, mm -hmm. I, I believe the statistic is 80% of marriages when um, one or the other spouse is incarcerated, 80% end in divorce. Oh, wow. Well, and I think I, he said too, Chris, that he offered her a divorce at the very beginning because yeah. he said, you know, I... I just know that you're going to suffer tremendously over the next ever how long? I think he said 10 years um, while they investigate. They you know drag me through the mud. They drag our family through the mud. So I'm offering you this divorce. And she refused it. And she said he said she stuck by him for better or for worse is what she told him. And so in those situations with when a crisis comes, that's the for worse part. Um, mm -hmm. And if you can stick it out mm -hmm. through that, um, I think, you know, that's what marriage is all about. Mm. Oh, that's so, great. Thanks for sharing that. So to recap, power couples, the three ways to conquer a crisis, the three G's are grounded, growing, and giving. And uh, let's, let's run down those verses for those of you who may not be looking at our show notes and just want to hear them. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 is uh, grounded, armor of God. Second Peter three seventeen and eighteen is uh, for growing and then for giving. Luke six thirty eight. Power couples, this has been an amazing time for us. I hope you have been inspired and encouraged with the three ways to conquer a crisis. If you have not, if you don't know this already, and you're not following us on Facebook, and you're not following us on Instagram and YouTube and all of the social media, and, and of course, powercouplesrock.com, where you go to get everything, we have started a new live show, which is called Power Couples Rock Live. And right now, it is on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We're working on some other locations uh, as well for that. But this is an opportunity for us to have virtual community with everyone. We, we love hearing from everyone. We don't always get to see everyone and feel that energy. And Power Couples Rock Live is an interactive show. 
So we, we'd love to have couples on. We'd love to be able to invite you on to the live stream and have you on. And, and also, you, if you don't feel like being on, maybe you didn't put your makeup on that day, um, you didn't get your hair did, whatever, you, we, you still can interact with us. You can chat with us on Facebook. You can chat with us on YouTube. You can chat with us on Twitter while this is happening. We have launched this thing, and we are so stoked about it because it just opens up so many avenues for Power Couples Rock, and we would love to have you aboard. So please join us on Power Couples Rock Live. All right, so let's get powered up. Thanks for listening to the Power Couples Rock podcast. We hope that you've been encouraged, inspired, and supported. Please listen and subscribe to our other Power Pods as we are confident that they will strengthen your marriage. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. It's there where we can extend these discussions together, take these conversations, and your marriage to the next level. Enjoy your day and power up.